Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Matter Management, Best Practices for Your Legal Documents and Data. My name is Anu Shaw and I will be your moderator. Joining us today are Chayla McDevitt and David Jeffries. Chayla is a Corporate Solutions Manager for the Corporate Legal Solutions T Division of CSD and has over 14 years of experience. Shayla is responsible for customer satisfaction, technology training, and new services. David is a senior sales engineer for compliance and governance services at CSD. With CSD for over 11 years, he has significant experience providing training, implementation, and consultative services to clients of CSD Matter Management and CSD Entity Management Solutions. And with that, let's welcome Shayla and David. Great. Thanks, Anu. It's very exciting to be here. We're right in the middle of uh, Groundhog's Day and Valentine's Day, which is just a great time of year. So we're very happy to share some time with our audience today. Thank you, David. Thank you, Anu. All right, we're going to get started with an agenda to review what we'll be going over today. You may have joined us today because your legal department manages a lot of documents, and you're wondering if there's a better way to find them when you need them and run reports on their key dates and other information. Or maybe it's to learn a different approach. Perhaps you're asking yourself, are we doing everything we can to protect our data? We hope to answer all of your questions and provide a well-rounded framework to begin your conversation on matter management internally. So what is matter management? Matter management is a legal project management tool that allows users to manage documents, data from the documents, such as name, expiration, type, responsible party, allows for team member communication and collaboration, and provides reporting on various data points specific to any contract, service of process, or legal document. What we'll do next is talk about maybe what are some of the common challenges that organizations face that do not have a system, which given the fact that half of our audience is in that boat, it would, I think, make sense to talk about some of these challenges. And so we certainly work with a lot of uh, prospective organizations that are, again, in the situation where they do not have a solution in place. And so these are some of the things that we hear quite often. One of the great challenges of not having a system is that there's no central repository. There's no one-stop shop where we can go to take a look at our litigation cases, contracts, any, again, legal critical documents and matters that the legal department has a responsibility for. If you are also uh, bringing uh, invoicing into the equation, which we'll talk about to some extent today in terms of spend management, again, without any billing platform, again, you've got invoices that are who knows where and have they been approved, and it becomes a, kind of a great challenge. And so confusion uh, reigns supreme here where uh, folks aren't quite sure, again, where is the uh, latest contract? Do I have the latest contract? When is the answer date for that litigation? Has this invoice been approved? Has it been paid? It's just very challenging to kind of track this information without a system to really help you in that regard. Another one of the uh, challenges that we uh, want to talk about quite a bit that you're seeing towards the bottom of this slide is security. Uh, one of the most popular things that I hear, it shouldn't be this way, but one of the most common things that I hear when we ask clients, well, how do you share litigation with outside counsel? How do you share contracts with folks outside of your organization? Uh, and we just hear time and time again that they're using email as a means of collaborating and sharing information. And as you know, many of you may suspect or know, you know, email is not the most secure technology in the world, so that definitely introduces you know, quite a bit of risk into the equation. Another quick thing I'll mention is the, is the lack of auditing. Not having a clear understanding from a security standpoint who can access the documents, who's looked at them, who's changed things. Uh, it could become maybe a bit of a guessing game in terms of understanding uh, having kind of those controls around your legal documents in your department. We're going to shift gears a little bit, and Shayla's going to talk about some of the considerations for evaluating a platform. David and I are frequently on the other side of these questions where clients or prospective clients are evaluating CSD matter management. So we get to hear the variety. What we've put together here is a checklist of the best examples that help to move the team forward in the decision-making process. So this is a great slide to print out from the deck. And we'll go through some specific questions on each category, starting with technology that meets the company needs. When evaluating a provider and looking at a matter management solution, effectively, the providers are going to fall into a couple of camps, uh, providers that offer software solutions and uh, providers that offer what is often referred to as software as a service or a browser-based platform. And what this slide looks to do in a concise fashion is sort of describe some of the challenges that software would entail. Uh, it would involve 
a considerable amount of IT involvement from your organization to get it off the ground and running. Also, you have, at that point have responsibilities for hosting and maintaining the platform. Uh, there could be seat licenses and user fees or restrictions around who can access the platform. And then typically with the software uh, option, uh, enhancements are not automatic and you might have to uh, pay for upgrades or even find yourself in a situation where uh, you are on an older version that maybe is no longer supported by the vendor. I've come across that with some organizations that I've worked with where, again, they're just sort of out of date. On the web-based side of things, uh, again, there are some great advantages on the browser solutions where, again, IT is not really involved in terms of the implementation. Uh, upgrades typically come automatically and you are often not restricted as far as users are concerned. Now, I mentioned that the IT folks would not necessarily need to be involved with the implementing a browser-based platform. That said, where they should be involved to a large extent is really kicking the tires and peeling back the onion in terms of the security that the vendor provides around the solution, which is what this slide uh, now speaks to. So a couple of very critical questions that pose to the vendor, you know, where are my documents and where is my data being stored? Who can access this information, not only within my company, but outside of our organization as well? What controls do we have? What can we put in place to maybe give users limited access to maybe a portion of the documents or a portion of the data that we're managing within the Matter platform? What protections are in place, so to speak, in terms of uh, securing information within the solution? And then lastly, you know, is information encrypted, which I think is a concept that uh, even if you don't use that term on a daily basis, you're probably familiar with. <clears throat> For example, if you were to make a purchase on Amazon, just as an example, and provide your credit card information, uh, that very secure credit card number is not traveling the Internet in plain text where it can be intercepted, but again, it's encrypted along the way so that it is not something that can be easily accessed or not accessed at all. Um, and so again, you want to make sure that your information is encrypted within these types of solutions. So with that said, with that kind of understanding of where security kind of weighs in, uh, Chayla is going to talk about some of the document management considerations. That's right. Document management, bare essentials, and some questions to ask. Since this is the most common challenge, um, you definitely want to ask questions of your potential vendors, things like, is there a central repository or one place I can go to find a document? How long are documents stored? Are documents indexed in a logical fashion so I can see documents relating to a specific agreement or service of process? What type of files or documents will we need to store? And that's something you can ask internally before even starting the conversation um, with the vendor. And then once you get into that conversation with the vendor asking, does the application support all the files that we would need it to. Document searching. Spending too much time finding documents being the most common challenge across all different types of organizations, this is a key consideration. And ideally, it's nice to search in numerous different ways, so things like document title, by company name or individual, by a keyword or phrase within a document, the date that the document was uploaded or last edited, or any data field tracked within the system all good questions to ask. Yeah, absolutely. And so we'll, we'll look to weave that into our online presentation in just a bit. One of the other considerations though that we'll talk to now is the ease of reporting. <clears throat> and so what good is a platform if you can't get information out of it? And so this is where reporting really comes into play. And really what you should be looking for is a system that allows you to easily build reports with a very intuitive user interface. I have seen platforms, clients have shared with me some other systems that are on the market where it's really daunting to try to put together a report and, and locate information. And so uh, a better platform will make it very simplified in terms of generating reports that allow you to focus on key information, maybe looking at trends of, of you know, growth of litigation, maybe in certain jurisdictions or understanding when there are expirations coming due for contracts, things of that nature. You certainly would want the ability to report on any field in the platform, make sure that users only have access to the right set of reports, uh, being able to essentially privatize reports that are only available to certain individuals, and then even uh, certainly save reports and even schedule reports, which is a, a popular capability where you can have the system in a proactive fashion send your reports electronically, which can become really an alerting mechanism so that you don't have to log in every time you want to see information in a more proactive fashion that information can be sent to you securely from these types of solutions. Another consideration as you start to evaluate matter management solutions would be integration. Uh, we live in an increasingly interconnected world and our applications really need to be the same way. And so um, how does the system, if at all, 
interface with other solutions? How do we get information into the platform? How do we get information out of the platform, so to speak? And again, we'll focus more specifically on CSE's matter management capabilities later on in the presentation, but I think I will take this opportunity to speak to a couple of examples of integration that we offer because I, I think it helps kind of bring into focus what we're talking about with integration. So a couple of examples that I would provide that our solution allows for with integration would be uh, first and foremost, email integration. A majority of the work that we perform is happening in email, and ultimately a lot of these email correspondences relate to a matter, a, a piece of litigation, a contract, a deal, and, and so with uh, our solution, you can effectively click a button and save that email conversation and its attachments within our solution. Another classic example of integration is the ability to feed data and documents from a solution like CSC Matter Management into another system. Maybe there's a, a downstream claim system or enterprise legal management system. And so we offer uh, numerous options for securely integrating and feeding data documents from our solution into another platform. The last option that I'll speak to is what we call web forms. And so we often have uh, clients that have a community of users that they actually don't want a permission into the Matter platform, uh, but they do want them to be able to essentially feed requests or feed documents into the solution. So we have a technology called web forms where the system can build a very simple web page that you can host that allows users to go ahead and actually fill in information, maybe even include attachments if you allow that, and essentially feed information into uh, the Matter Management platform, sort of opening it up to a wider audience, but doing it in a very secure fashion. And really that's kind of a segue into talking about collaboration, the ability to sort of work not just within the legal department, but sort of you know, bringing this uh, type of a solution to a, a larger part of your organization that Shayla will speak to. I'll start with the questions that you want to ask your team internally. And one of the best questions is who needs access and why? And this is a good question for a couple of reasons. The first thing is the more people that get use out of the system, the easier it is to get approval. Um, it's also a really good question for security purposes. As an example, using CSC, uh, the CSC system provides unlimited users, and each user has their own role-based permission set, so they only have access to see what they've been given access to see. When you get to the stage of talking to vendors and asking them questions, a um, couple of options would be, is there an audit trail to see who did what and when? And also, does the system have e email reminders, um, something that you can either remind yourself or someone else? Uh, the next consideration is scalability for a long-term solution. Usually, once you put something into place, you want to keep it that way because user adoption is, again, one of the other common challenges. Uh, scalability is a common pitfall with homegrown systems. They don't adapt quickly to growth. Also, the system can become outdated quickly when the designers and the programmers have changed roles. And that's something that unfortunately we do hear from clients where they built something that maybe worked for them years ago, but now it's starting to uh, not necessarily meet the requirements and they might find themselves in a position where it's not so easy uh, to get an improvement or enhancement to that particular homegrown application. And so more commonly, a vendor platform is going to improve and evolve over time. <clears throat> One of the other considerations that we'll speak to now is this concept of configurability versus customization. And this is where we get into semantics a little bit, but when you talk about something being configurable, it means that you as the end user have the ability to make changes. You can create fields, you can modify screens and views, and, and really tweak the system on the fly as you see fit. A system that is customizable, by definition, is a solution that requires the vendor to get involved to make those types of modifications, where maybe there's coding that has to take place, or upgrades and improvements, and so ultimately, clients are looking for systems that are configurable, where you are in the driver's seat, so to speak, where you can on the fly, create fields, reports, screens, uh, and again, have the ability to make the system conform, really, uh, to the needs of your organization in terms of the information that you want to track within the platform. Uh, and then certainly, again, there wouldn't be costs associated with that configuration versus, again, platforms that involve a vendor uh, to make that custom change, there could likely be a fee associated with that type of work from the vendor. Now, we talked about uh, e-billing and spend management and passing earlier on in our comments, uh, but certainly this is a common component of most matter management solutions. And so we've talked about the fact that within these types of platforms, a matter could be a number of different things, you know, a contract, a deal, a piece of real estate, but probably more often than not, a, a, a matter is a piece of litigation. That's probably the most common type of matter that we see our clients managing. And so there's often a need to work with outside counsel on these matters, and then you're looking to uh, 
be able to manage the spend with your outside counsel. And so uh, e-billing is a means of securely receiving invoices electronically, getting out of that manual paper process, which introduces a number of instant improvements. One of the things that most e-billing systems can do is uh, allow you to set up what are often called billing guidelines to make sure that vendors' invoices are meeting certain criteria in terms of negotiated rates or things that maybe you don't pay for. Uh, and that way, instead of having to manually read through the invoice line by line to see if there are discrepancies, the system can go ahead and do that work on your behalf. Another key uh, capability with most of these e-billing tools is the ability to create approval workflow or approval workflow where if an invoice perhaps exceeds a certain dollar threshold, it can trigger an email to an initial approver. Once they provide the review and approval, it can automatically then trigger an email to a second individual and really have an automated workflow capability to make sure that uh, invoices are being approved by the right users within the organization. Ultimately, most of these platforms can then feed approved invoices directly to an accounts payable system to even add more efficiencies into the process of getting invoices paid. And so these are some of the great benefits of having an integrated e-billing solution within your matter management platform. So with that said, we've talked about a lot of considerations, but one of the things that came back from our audience clear as day uh, was cost. What is this all going to cost? That's what Chael is going to speak to us about. That's right. And not that anyone has ever forgotten to ask this question, uh, we still included it because what we've done is added some price clarifying questions. Uh, what is the fee structure? Is it based on users? Is it based on documents? The number of matters? You can also ask when you're viewing a demonstration, are all the features included? And then, especially with anything that's software-based, are upgrades included or is there an additional fee? With CSC matter management, as an example, uh, we base our fee on the number of matters. Documents, users, training is all unlimited and included. Expertise and support is something to be mindful of when evaluating matter management vendors. Some service providers cap training hours. Not something that we do here at CSC, but we have um, seen this with, with other, um, other vendors. Um, also, your team may have specific needs on how training is handled, so if you think there are any special concerns, it doesn't hurt to ask. One of the things uh, that I might add to this is we saw from our, one of our polls that you know, user adoption was one of the key concerns. And so you know, certainly you should be then looking for a vendor that if someone is not sure about how to do something, they can pick up the phone and get an immediate accurate answer, and that's going to definitely increase the, the amount of the, the users that are going to feel more comfortable with the platform and be more inclined to continue using the solution and not just let it sort of die on the vine. Thank you. Canceling service is a question that we hear all the time. Um, when you find a, a solution that you really like, and part of that buying decision is, but what if something changes going forward and we have to cancel service? So it is a good question to ask. Uh, the CSC matter management application is unique in that we don't require a contract or set um, term for service. In reviewing other contenders, it's a good idea to know what's required on your end. Um, so is there a contract? Also, if you were to cancel service, will you be able to get your data and documents out of the system in a convenient and usable way? As an example of this, with the CSC matter management solution, all the data and documents are always yours. Documents can be emailed out in batches, and data can be exported into Excel, which is a really usable format. Tips for implementation. All of these tips are coming from the CSC team that brings on new matter management customers, so they have a lot of uh, experience with customers that are and um, organizations that are new to using matter management. So we'll go through these. Uh, the first is assign a primary point of contact. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we would um, be training just one person. So often we're training a large group of people, and there's lots of people involved um, in the customizations, and, and that's okay. But having one lead person to help us schedule the meetings, um, to go through with questions, that really helps to avoid communication delays. And I have to imagine that would be the same um, with, just all, with just about all matter management um, providers. Um, the next thing is decision makers debriefing the end users. So once a decision has been made on a, a vendor for matter management, have a meeting with all of the users and have the executives or the, the people that made the decision set forth their goals and their best practices for using the system. That way the users, when they go into training, have a really clear intention on, on how they're going to be using the system. Also discuss um, what data points 
um, the system should capture and make required. Think anything that you want included in a report would probably be a required field. And then consider a data import for your existing information and documents, and then think about who on your team could work on putting this information together. Yeah, those are excellent tips. And one of the questions that I sometimes get in my role is, you know, how long does it take to implement this type of a platform? And commonly, when I pose that question to our implementation team, the <clears throat> excuse me, number one thing they come back with is, well, how much availability does the client have? Because we're ready to go, we're ready to start working in the system. And so having that dedicated lead contact that Shayla mentioned, I think, is critical, uh, because that way you're going to have the, the smoothest implementation possible. So with that, at this point, what we'd like to do is talk in more detail about CSE matter management, which we'll talk about at a high level on these uh, next two slides, but then we'll look at it in, in more detail in a demonstration. So fundamentally, CSE matter management is a legal project management tool that can be used for managing any type of legal documents, it has collaborative capabilities, and a very robust reporting engine built in as well. One of the things that we sometimes get questioned about, well, what types of matters can I manage in the application? What if I have leases or contracts or agreements or real estate, intellectual property? It could be anything. And so the slide speaks to a few of the more common examples, litigation contracts among the, the probably the two most popular. But at the end of the day, our platform has been built in such a customizable, configurable way uh, that a matter could be really anything that you need it to be. Uh, the next slide talks in a little bit more detail about some of the features that are available within CSE Matter Management. One of the things that I want to talk to, because I think this <clears throat> question does come up sometimes, is that the SOP that CSE receives as your registered agent can be integrated directly into CSC Matter Management. <clears throat> and so in that, in that example, if SOP is received on your behalf, our team is able to automatically create a matter for you within our solution. That's something that you have to do in a manual fashion, which is something that we hear quite often where clients are you know, receiving SAP from their vendors and then emailing it to someone, manually creating matters in downstream systems, which is incredibly time consuming and inefficient. And so effectively we can integrate and automate that process for you with uh, our SAP delivery. A few other capabilities to speak to here, and we'll see a number of these in the demonstration. The ability to integrate emails with the platform, having robust searching, we talked about Again, the pain point of our, the number one pain point of our audience being the time spent searching for information, so we'll talk about that. Uh, and then having the ability to also have an integrated uh, spend management capability with the CSE billing functionality. Great. So thank you again, uh, Chela and David. That is all the time we have today. As a reminder, if you would like to be contacted by a CSE specialist to review your specific needs, please select on one of the options on your screen. And if we didn't get to your question, we will contact you with a response after the webinar. Thank you to everyone who joined us. We hope to see you next time.